Hi everyone, uh, my name is Bradley and this is Aaron, we work at Deloitte. Today we're going to briefly take you through some of the learnings that we've gained from doing some um, continuous integration exercises. Continu the continu continuous integration that we um, have kind of embarked on is, is taken a bit of a different angle. Most places um, they do it for the, the actual continuous integration. We kind of took it it through a different angle which Aaron will talk about just now and um, but I kind of moving back to the continuous integration side of things we're going to chat a little bit about the tools um, that we've used and um, hopefully hear from you guys to see what kind of experiences you've you've had in this area um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some of our distribution and that's about it so I'm going to hand over to Aaron and then you'll hear from me just now thanks Brad so continuous integration so Deloitte built an app called Bamboo, which, um, without going into too much detail, it's about business continuity management. And um, we had a situation where the one code base needed to be slightly modified for uh, several different clients, so uh, eight, eight, about eight clients at the time when we started doing this. And um, basically needed to be a, a test and a demo version for eight different clients. So if you do the math, that's a lot of different builds and a lot of different configurations. It was taking poor Brad about a day and a half to do every single build and get it into a state where it was ready to, uh, for uh, the clients to go in and download it. So we realised that we needed some form uh, of automated process and that, that was kind of how all this started. Uh, we, what we really wanted to save time, we wanted to automate uh, the build and the distribution process. So just to give you a, a rundown on some of the tools that we used at the time. So we used SVN uh, as our source repository at, for Bamboo. And when going through, looking at the technologies that we wanted to use to automate this, um, it was very exper experimental. So we, we kind of tossed up between using Jenkins or Hudson or even, even Bamboo. And we, we decided on Hudson in the end. Um, in terms of distribution, we uploaded our IPA files to Amazon Web Services which actually worked out quite nicely. Um, in terms of doing all the automation, in terms of um, built using Xcode build, running unit tests, um, uploading to AWS, we use just bash scripting. Uh, we also use TestFlight for the distribution as well. I'm not sure how many of you use TestFlight, but it's really cool. Um, so that was that we were able to use Bash to upload to TestFlight using their API, and then that would automatically notify the testers. But we'll, uh, we'll go into that a little uh, in more detail a little later. So I spent about two weeks playing around with these, with these technologies that I'd never touched before. Um, and the end solution was instead of a day and a half of Brad's time, it took an hour of, um, of a laptop's time to run through. So basically the process is it checked out the code from SVN, it compiled it uh, Oof, eight times two, I'm not good at maths, that meant that many times. And, uh, and the tricky thing here was um, because they were for different clients, we needed a different distribution certificate for every single client. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have actually worked with the keychain uh, that much, but you can't have the same certificate, uh, and each certificate had the, the word Deloitte in it. And this, the certificate cannot be ambiguous, so you can't have eight certificates in there with the word Deloitte in it. Uh, there can only be one at a time. So what the script actually needed to do was go into the keychain, delete the certificate, load the relevant one in, make the build again and again and again and again and again. And, um, and then it also uploaded it to um, Amazon Web Services as well. So yeah, as I said, it took uh, a, an hour, about an hour of automated time instead of, um, instead of a day and a half. As Brad said, it's a bit of a different approach to um, CI. A lot of people approach CI because they want to get their build process, they want to monitor the health of their build and run unit tests, and, and that's certainly what, what this led into. But for, for us, our time it was, was quite... Uh, we, we didn't have a lot of it, basically. Um, so for us, CI was all about automating the process and, and, going, and going from there. Um, it, saved us a lot of money, it saved us a lot of time and what it did for us was build a really good business case um, around, around involving CI in our, in, our, um, in our process going forward. Because a lot of iPhone and iPad projects are, are quite small, some people or some companies can struggle to see the overall benefit of using continuous integration or the amount of time that it takes to set up a CI server, the amount of time it takes to add a new project to the CI server, a lot of people just don't really see the point. Whereas for us, having that initial, using that, that initial research time, that initial development time, 
to create this server was uh, was really quite um, quite quite effective. And yeah, as I said, it's grown into a platform on which we're implementing continuous tests, which Brad's going to talk about in a bit in a bit, um, saving us a lot of time in the long run during development and making distribution really really easy. So I'm going to hand over to Brad to talk about unit testing. <laughs> so what? This is kind of the segue into our unit testing. We've got our build platform running and um, we're starting to put more projects onto it. And we, um, our main aim now is to start using it for the purpose that CI is intended for. We want to actually start doing the testing of our builds and um, find out when things break and do some automated things like that. And um, we've embarked on that. Uh, we've started um, by using the um, standard Xcode um, send test case uh, suite. And um, if you want to learn about that, Stuart did a great Coco Heads talk a while back, which is available on the website. We've got the link at the end of this presentation, which details how you do that. One of the invaluable areas that we're doing test cases um, using the Send Test Case suite is in API testing. So a lot of our functional testing um, involves us taking um, an API from a third-party provider and um, building functionality around that. And what we do is we take we sometimes take a static uh, set of that API, or we look at the documentation and, and generate a kind of static set of APIs ourselves. And um, we do functional testing all the way through from uh, I don't know something like uh, adding two numbers together or uh, whatever we need to do all the way through to the API and then and pulling it back down, which is quite ha quite handy. Um, what we found is that um, it's quite handy to take those test cases and turn them around and actually test the APIs themselves. Often we'll find that um, during system integration testing or something like that, our application won't, won't work properly and um, we'll run our test cases and our functional tests will all check out fine and then we just turn the test cases around and test the API and we can say, ah, actually guys, your API is not working. Um, it's a problem on your side and we can be quite helpful in narrowing down what that problem is or which API is called or if a parameter has changed or something like that. So it's been pretty handy for us. Um, what we're working on currently, um, and it would be great to hear from you guys if you have any input, is to build this into our um, kind of tightly couplet with our integration server. What we're looking at using um, and experimenting with is the, um, the OC unit to J unit. Um, uh, suite so that we can get JUnit XML out of it and Hudson understands that and get nice reporting and things like that. So that's something we're playing with at the moment. We're also looking at, we kind of got our functional testing going, we want to start doing some UI testing so we're looking at some tools there. If anyone's played with that, that'll be great to hear. Um, one of the things um, we're looking at is the ability to do functional testing and then do GUI testing in a way that if you click through to something and it fails, we want to kind of see a screenshot of that um, or maybe a video clip or something like that um, and so that we can come back the next morning and say, ah, oh, this died on the fifth time we tried it or something like that. And um, we're also looking at ways of getting our testing working on multiple simulators that are kind of headless. And um, some of the stuff we're using to do that is um, KIF, Keep It Functional. And Waxim, if we take KIF and combine it with Waxim, Waxim allowed us to do that kind of headless testing on multiple simulators. So something, we had something the other day fail on iOS 4 but work on iOS 5 because we've all been developing on iOS 5 and one of us used an API that didn't exist on 4. So it's helpful for that kind of thing. Um, and the other reason we quite like it is because the um, stuff is written in Objective-C, which is something as iPhone programmers we all understand. And some of the other stuff that we tried requires JavaScript. I think the native um, uh, functional stuff, the UI stuff that comes with Xcode requires JavaScript skills, which you know we all have, but it's quite nice if you're writing Objective-C to do your test cases in Objective-C alongside that. And our functional tests are in Objective-C already anyway. So that's our short description of our test cases. Um, Aaron's just going to quickly chat about our distribution methods. Thanks, Brad. There we are. Cool. So we've got the automated, well, the continuous integration. We've got the um, the unit testing running. Now we need to get get the build out to um, to our testers. So as I mentioned, with Bamboo, we used um, AWS as um, as our hosting for the IPAs. Um, they were enterprise builds, 
which made it really handy so anyone can download it and run it. Um, you needed a logon so it wasn't like you, anyone could, could use the app. Um, but what we, um, what we needed was a, a method of, of get it, getting these builds up onto Amazon Web Services uh, in, in, a, in a format that would allow people to use it. So what we did was I wrote a bash script that created the manifest files and the HTML dynamically every time we did a checkout, uploaded all those to uh, AWS using a really cool um, command line tool, which I'll point you to at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the talk. And as well as this, we also had a select group of testers that, that wanted it pushed to their phones as well. So we had the clients that needed to download it to demo and actually use, but we also had the testers and uh, we used TestFlight um, for, um, for the testers. So that was what we did for Bamboo. Things have started to evolve uh, a little bit where we, we don't just do iPhone and iPad and we don't just don't do iOS development at Deloitte, we've got a, a .NET team, a Java team, and we're, what we're really trying to do is align our CI pr um, across all, all the different practices. So um, everywhere we've decided to move to Atlassian's Bamboo as our CI server, which is uh, an in going to be an interesting transition. We're changing to Git as our uh, source control management system using Bitbucket, which is very cool. And TestFlight is going to be the main um, the main tool we use going forward to distribute our um, our builds. AWS is, is really useful for um, for enterprise stuff, but when you're using apps that can't be run on any phone, um, test flights just makes things a lot easier. So in terms of some of the resources we found useful, when I was, uh, because we had to create um, the manifest file and edit the info.plist file on the fly, um, I, found, I came across uh, plist buddy, which is really, really handy. Um, I didn't know about it until about a week of toying with this and it made things a lot easier, so definitely check that out. Uh, for those of you that haven't worked with the TestFlight API, um, it's, it's really worth lo looking into. You can, if you use, uh, if you use scripting, you can up upload an IPA, you can upload, um, uh, and I've gone blank because I'm under pressure. That's all right. Um, Basically, you can up upload the IPA. You can also send them a command to let them know if if they want to notify the testers or not. So it can be a silent upload, or you can ping everyone to let them know, hey, there's a new build going on. Um, command line access to AWS, which we found really, really useful, um, is at that URL, which you'll be able to get from the Coca Heads website when this goes up. In terms of some of the resources we found useful for unit testing, um, we've got the talk from Coca Heads a few a few months back, which was held at the, um, the York Butter Factory. And we've also got KIF and OC unit to J unit, uh, the GitHub links there. So that brings us to the end of our, of our relatively brief um, point. But I, one thing that we wanted to know was um, how many of you guys use CI as part of your, as part of your process? Okay, right, that's, that's a pretty good number. Cool, Brad. Come here. Yeah, any questions? Yes. Yeah, has anyone got any questions? Yes. Um, a lot of the bash scripting is very secret squirrel stuff, especially when dealing with that. Um, are you interested in sharing any of your uh, discoveries with code? When well, a lot of the command line tools in terms of building for Xcode, running unit tests, are all available online. Um, when you say secret squirrel, well, what are you, specifically what actions are you referring to? Uh, certainly when we were trying to do it for the first Okay. Um, wh wh when the biggest um, yeah. area a lot of people have trouble with is around the security stuff. Like um, the certificate management, and that can take a, a little bit of um, experimentation to get that one right. And it did. <laughs> it took me. It took me about a week of uh, of toying with different tools, um, and especially the security, as I mentioned, because we were working with multiple certificates. Um, we had to use the key ch the, the keychain editor to delete the certificate from the keychain, import it using uh, passwords and all that type of fun stuff. So it did. It took took me about a week of playing around with different commands um, to actually get the whole build process um, solid and, and and working. So. If that script is something that is of use to you, please contact us and, and we, can, yeah, well, um, we can show you how some we'll, of stuff works. We'd be happy to share that with you. That's fine. Um, what about version number management? Is that something that you, for the custom solution for, or do you just use the normal Apple uh, yep. command line? 
we use the normal Apple build numbers, and then as part of the, uh, part of the build script, we automatically bump that number. In our initial iteration, we're using the SVN check-in number, and just appending that onto our kind of major build number. And um, in moving over to Git, we're going to do something similar with the check-in number. Oh. I was going to say, based on the previous question yeah. about contributing back some of the scripts that you've come up with, is mm. Deloitte Digital going to uh, get onto GitHub and have a Deloitte Digital and they <laughs> push their own I mean, we, we don't want an REA that we do average average commits to, but I mean, yeah. mm. no, I think that's something a, you guys are keen on. A brilliant idea. On. We've kind of adopted Bitbucket, so no, no one uses it but us, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's a good idea and it's something that we want to look at. Yeah, it's something we've talked about. I mean, yeah, mentioned something about screenshot comparison. So there's something a tool called Zucchini, which builds on top of your automation. You might find it helpful. It's developed by AI. Called Zucchini. Oh, we'll talk about that. Yeah, but it does require a lot of functionality. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some, there'll be someone in the office that knows about all of that, so we'll, we'll, we'll get them on board. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a chat to you about it. Yeah. Um, just in regards to using Kith, uh, I'm just wondering, are you running it on devices, and also how much have you had to hack the framework? Have you got most support out of the guys at Square? We haven't played with it too much. We're trying to get it running on simulators, ideally, in a headless way, so that at night it can run and we kind of wake up to screenshots and videos and the kind of stuff that it promises us but we we haven't ventured too far in that area so if you've if you've you've tried it you i'm just i visited the guys that wrote kids last week and I, yeah. I couldn't get much commitment out of them that they would actually support it going forward so i'm a little bit uh, skeptical so i'm just trying hmm. to find um find people's experience with how much you have to Hack it, how much it just works out of the Okay, yeah. Yeah. we're looking for experience um, in so that too. So. We're actually using Kip as well at Census, but we're actually deploying to the bus um, using something called Footstrap mm -hmm. because people don't buy simulators, so we do on the device. Um, as far as hacking goes, we have to pull some changes from different branches, like things like swipe gestures. They want to talk to you, so yeah. I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, other than that, Kip really works nicely out of the box. Issues. Cool. Yeah. Uh, why did you go with uh, Hansen instead of Jenkins? <laughs> I knew that question was going to come up. <laughs> um, it's a very good question. Um, why does a tail? Why does a coin land on heads? Really, um, it, at, the, at that beginning, we really just wanted to get something up and running, uh, and the priority was around the automation and the and getting it working. Hudson and Jenkins, for for our purposes at that time were much for muchness. So having looked into it a bit more now, uh, I know I think Jenkins has a bit better support for, uh, uh, and it has got an Xcode plugin. I haven't looked too too deep into it. Um, yeah, it might be worth it, but. I've used that plugin and I didn't recognize your OC units and J plugin. Mm, yeah, so we, we, haven't, we did, haven't used Jenkins, but we'll be moving to Bamboo anyway. So it's really, it was really just, uh, just to get something up and running. But yeah, good question. Yeah, that's what we want to. That's we we haven't. We do only functional testing at the moment, but that's what we're trying to play with Kif and um, that stuff we've just been chatting about now to try and automate the the user testing side of it, the actual beauty. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there any reason why you went with test flight? as opposed to some of the other alternatives out there? Like, um, is it just the first one you came across? Or? All the cool kids are doing it, I guess. <laughs> 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 the only reason I ask is because I have, um, they don't have a great reputation in terms of downtime and things like that. I've um, noticed that they haven't been that great with downtime. And just hmm. They've been okay for us. Hmm. Um, yeah. We don't use, we're not using them day in, day out though. So. Um, but for the most part, it's been, yeah, it's been okay. But it'd be good to learn if there are some others out there. Yeah, hockey yeah. app yeah. is definitely worth What's that called, sorry? Hockey app. Yeah. Hockey app, yeah. yeah. okay. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been using Test Flight, and it's over the last month or so, I've been getting very sluggish. Okay. Um, yeah, mm. 5, 5 p.m., which is like, you know, 2 a.m. San Francisco time. Uh, they put yeah. their servers on churn mode, yeah. and we're sitting there trying to push out builds. And they've got. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. 
I don't know. They're, they're suffering from the, the problem of uh, free service and scaling. Mm. Um, yeah. Whereas hockey is a paid service. Let so. me pay you to fight. Yeah, exactly. I would pay them to. Yeah. 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 Completely. So they, hockey, well, all the reports that hockey's more stable because there's less people using it because so you have to pay for it. Okay, and do they have a similar API to test flight yeah. that allows you to push the stuff out? Yeah, they, have, um, they were sort of first up on, on actually capturing the uh, crash reports. Okay, so yeah, that's invaluable to us. That is reports very cool. Remotely, yeah. Okay, cool, we'll check it out. I'm conscious that we're in between you guys and pizza. Yeah, <laughs> I think it should be the last question. Yeah. So in the best case, you've got a, a working build on the server download, but when the tests break or when the build breaks, what's your update? How do you notify it? At the moment, we're we're using that JUnit um, testing thing, and we're looking on the we're not we're not getting email notifications or the like. That's one of the reasons we want to move over to the Atlassian Bamboo build server because we've got a workflow that we're using in another part of our business that handles notifications and blames and that kind of thing. It also talks very nicely to um, Atlassian. They they wrote Bitbucket and the Bamboo integration server, so you can take things like a broken build and tie it to a bug and assign that to a developer all within one system. So that is kind of an ecosystem that we, we're buying into and I think is going to work quite well. At the moment with our um, current setup, we're just going onto the web interface and having a look at what's broken and then sorting it out from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Thank you. Thanks. Melbourne Cocoa Heads is brought to you by Itty Bitty Apps, but we couldn't do it without the generous sponsorship of Shine Technologies. Thanks also to RMIT for providing the venue and to our many regular attendees, speakers and volunteers. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, you can visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or by following Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.